Jamie, my fucking man. It's been a while since I've had a podcast, but we're back with a bang with the main man, Jamie. Appreciate you coming on, bro. No, no, How you been, well. man? I've been well, yeah. yeah. How uh, was your holiday? Dubai? Nice, went to um, went to Dubai, so, so we get, got four or five weeks off. Went there with... Uh, Were you there for the full four weeks? No, I wish. No. I wish, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Expensive out there. Yeah, I can imagine. Fucking hell, four weeks. Um, so I just had a week. Um, but like I said, it's in four, mate. Two what? Oh. I think it's 39, 40, something like that. I mean, that is hot. So. I was going to say, okay, you can't really... Be, I feel like a lot of British people, like, we've had nice weather. Even you, Harry, you were saying, oh, it's too hot today. It's like 23 degrees. This is nice for me, bro. This is... This is chilling. Too much. Too much for me, mate. So I would go again. Like, no, it's yeah. nice, but not that. Did you only just go to Dubai then? For a couple not that of weeks? time of year. Um, and then I came back and just chilled out for a couple of weeks and then went to um, went to Portugal for the oh, family. So that's all right. that, was, that was chill. What did you get up to? Um, literally, that just chill. Just chill. Went out, a few nice places to eat, and that was my. That was just before I went back to football. So How long have you been back training for? We've been back in now for about three weeks. Three weeks, that's not too bad. You guys, fucking hell, you had like two years without a break. Yeah. Fuck it, I don't know how, like how taxing was that on your body, bro? Two years of not really having a break. But there was obviously like, there was obviously COVID and stuff, yeah. but we had to keep like training through that because obviously nobody knew when, when that was gonna, when that was gonna end. And we'd be straight back into, into games. So the whole time we were just like at it keeping fit so like I said there, there was a break from games but in terms of like staying on it and yeah staying sharp yeah we was we didn't really stop that bro I just thought as well do you want, do you want to wear my sunglasses because I'm not even facing the sun I'm all right you know sure, I yeah. don't mind a squint <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to squint as I can see you there I was like nah um yeah I want to just like before we talk about like Leeds and how you were last season I want to just ask you about like yourself like how have the last two years been for you personally? We're talking f football? Personal life and football, like obviously a lot has happened in the last two years, um, like your career wise, but then even like, have, have you had anything, any, any struggles in the last couple of years or? Uh, I, I, I know what you were saying to me before, obviously, in terms of your football, like you've been a bit disappointed with your game time, even though you've had fucking 700 minutes in the Premier League, which is fucking good. Like, how have you been personally? Yeah, good. Um, like I say, football probably takes up a large, like a large part of of my life. Like it's um, what I spend, you know, most of my time doing. And most days, like I say, there's not many, there's not many days off. Um, so that, you know, has a big impact on on how I'm doing it myself. So, um, you know, I want to try put everything into that. And um, usually, you know, when that's going well, everything else seems to, you know kind of fall into place. Do you ever feel like, do you ever feel like you get moments where you feel burnt out with how much you train? Um, I think, I think, I think they manage the load quite well, like, um, especially during the season when there's games and stuff like, we train once and it's not too, it's not too long or intense, but then obviously you've got, you've got gym and, and stuff like that. So, Maybe not. Um, it breaks up nicely. Yeah. 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 I think so. Um, the whole two years, obviously, with COVID and stuff, I'd be interested to know, as a, as a, as a player, coming from a player's perspective, the pressure that you guys get put under, like under the media spotlight. Um, if you look at, you know, what's happened with Harry Maguire over the last couple of years, um, and then even recently, Jack Grealish just being on holiday and stuff. Mm. Uh, the pressure you guys get put under, the spotlight you get, guys get put under is pretty extraordinary for someone that's like, you're just normal people at the end of the day doing your job. Do you think it's hard for footballers to be themselves, like, off the pitch? Yeah, obviously, like, those two are on a, on a different yeah. different level to, to where I'm at. You know, they can't really go anywhere and do anything without somebody or something seeing what's going on um but there's definitely that like um i'd say it comes like with part of the job but you can't obviously go out and um behave our normal you know 
21 year old would do you know what i mean yeah because you you got to be like wary of what who's around you and what's going on and what could potentially come you know come back to come back to um haunt you like yeah. like you say like yeah, as with yeah. some with some players have you have you struggled with dealing with that at all because obviously I can imagine what was it like when you first started to break through the first team and then I can imagine you go into Leeds you probably get noticed a little bit more like was that weird getting used to uh, a little bit at first yeah um but everyone's just like wants to talk football do you know what I mean yeah. so that's um that's what I enjoy talking about it so it's not really a, like a a negative thing for a you. negative thing for yeah. me because usually it's just like you know questions about the team and stuff like that so it's not it's not it's not too bad now obviously like i said i know you're, you're not in that spotlight um but do, do you feel as though there's a lot of support in terms of like mental health awareness for footballers because you see a lot of people deal with the struggles of like with trolling online and all that sort of yeah. stuff um and obviously, I can imagine just like when you, when you're playing and you're getting abused at a game, that's that's completely different. That's like I think a part and parcel of, of playing yeah, football. That's... But like outside of that, do you think there's enough su support for footballers? I th I think I think there is, yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely at the at the places. Well, I say places. I've I'm, I've been at Leeds, you know, my whole whole career so far. What, um, what do they do to? Do they, do they give you any type of workshops or do, are they just constantly just yeah there's on you? there's work, there's like workshops yeah. on and there's there's people who you know constantly make it clear that like they're there if you know if you need them and um yeah you know, I, mean, I can't feel like they can do they can do much more than that yeah well that, i think i think that's that's what, what you want because sometimes you see like for for me, obviously this is a complete outsider's perspective. But when I look at being a Man United fan, when I look at Harry Maguire, for example, yeah. Even when even even Rashford as well, to a certain extent, like you just last season especially, you just saw that they were just so shot off the pitch. No matter when they got on, you could just tell that their their head wasn't yeah. quite, quite in it. I can imagine when you're in a Premier League football team or when you're in a in a professional team in any sport. And you're under that much stress that you can't, you don't even really get a chance to just like, oh, do you know what? I just need two weeks, like just to, <laughs> to get my own bearings back. You don't, you don't really get that in football, do you? No, it's no. non-stop. Do you, do you reckon because of, of how much money is involved in sponsors and all that sort of stuff, or do you reckon that plays a part? Um, I don't know. It's just kind of all, always how football's been. You know, you get your break in in June and the months in between. It's just like full steam ahead like it's just do you think that train game train yeah game. Do, you, do, you, do you think that there will ever be like some sort of a players union or something like that because I know when like the Jose for example the Nations League I think most professional footballers kind of just see that as just a tin pot kind of thing just for you away from probably all these guys to make a bit a bit of extra money just to make friendly seem a bit better but just I don't know. For, for, for me personally, I can imagine if you're only getting one month off when you're constantly training like the way you do. Like, I don't feel like necessarily the Premier League or the football associations have the footballers' best interest at mind. Is that like something that's like a shared opinion around footballers at all? It's not something that like we really think about, think about yeah. or talk about. But um, obviously, like with football, it's a because the flip not, side of the coin, not, yeah, the flip side of the coin is obviously you get like every oh well these guys are fucking earning hundreds of thousands yeah. so who are they to kind of complain? But at the same time, like it's not your fault that there's that much money. It's not. It's, like, yeah, exactly. I, I, I've always thought there's a lot of people that think oh footballers earn way too much money, but then the way I see it is like well, the fucking clubs and Sky and BT are making so much money off of the footballers, so I think it's only fair that you get your fair share. But I don't think that just because of how much money you make means that you should be overworked necessarily if that makes sense i think it's i think it's like down to the demand like that many people watch it like worldwide yeah like when there's a premier league game on it's not just the you know the people in the stadium that are watching there's on a normal premier game there's probably like a million and million people like with eyes on the game it's so, crazy to think that yeah but then it's like that at all levels yeah like, there's there's always 
a way to watch the game. Do you know what I mean? So um, I think I think that's why there's so much like money around it, just because there's that that many people wanting to watch for sure. Yeah, part of football. I mean, sponsorship money has gone crazy. I wouldn't be surprised if in a few years, like you see the Premier League and the Champions League go more towards like a an American NFL style where like they make, well, they, they did that for the Champions League. They had like a bit of a show before. And I, I think yeah. as money grows, it, it will become more Americanized if, if that is a thing. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Um, you we were saying before how you were, well, you've been a bit disappointed with your game time. How hard has that been to deal with, obviously? Giving you everything every training session, and did you did you feel like you should have had more game time, or how how would you see the last two years for your career? It's part of it's part of football, really. I'd say, um, like, that's, there's always like competition for for places and stuff like that. So I'd, in a way, it's like kind of healthy um, that you know it hasn't been like straightforward, and it's kept me in a way like. To keep to keep pushing to want that to yeah. want that more game time and stuff like that. So if anything, it's kept like the the incentive to like improve there. Like if you just ha- if you just on your back, yeah, yeah if you yeah, just yeah. handed something like you, I'm not saying I would, but you could easily like get complacent. And if you, whereas if it's like something you it's a goal and you want to work towards it, and it's a goal that you know I haven't obviously achieved yet which would be like to play every game or yeah. multiple seasons in the in the Premier League then it's you know it's it's in front of me it's something I can carry on going for. Well I think bro you've got to always just sometimes just realise like if you just have, have a look and think well a lot of people aren't even in your position to be 22 and being in the Premier League is fucking an achievement in itself so you've got to make sure you pat yourself on the back as well. Thank we're, you very much. Yeah well, it's <laughs> true bro like mate 700 minutes in the best league in the world is something to be proud of, bro. Like, I know that you might not have got as much game time as you wanted, maybe there's not, not as many starts. I know you came off the bench a lot, but that experience is so valuable, bro. Like, so valuable. Definitely. So Definitely. You've got to fucking always just keep yourself in check sometimes a little bit. How, how, how would you say, or where would you see yourself next season then? If you wanted to get a bit more game time, what's your, your thought going into the next season? Yeah, to play as much football as possible obviously um as you like when you're younger it's like um you know it's all about breaking through yeah. and stuff like that and making an impression and then as you get older it's like kind of maintaining that and becoming you know like a um, consistent that's yeah. it yeah, yeah i'd say like consistency and stuff becomes important so to be you know, wherever that may be, out regularly on the pitch and playing plenty of minutes and, and plenty of football. Would you say at your age, now I know, I know by, when I say performance, I know that performance means scoring and, and getting assists, but would yeah. you say your performance is more important than the statistics at your age? So say, so say like the way you play is more important than how many goals or assists you're contributing, or would you say they come hand in hand together? Um, oh, a tough question. I don't know. Probably for me, performance. Yeah. Um, rather than rather than the stats. I mean, if you can get both, you've cracked it. Yeah, you've cracked it. If you <laughs> you've can get cracked both. it. There's you know there's players that have the stats and maybe not the performance, and there's there's players that are, are the opposite. Um, but for me to to come away from a game thinking I played well would be better than to come away thinking yeah. I've not played great but I've scored I can imagine Perform- performance stands yeah. out a little bit more yeah like I'd obviously so. the, the stats obviously a goal and assist does does help but I, I do think well I'm not coming from any fucking experience from a professional football <laughs> level but I would imagine that performance is kind of the main thing that is looked on at your stage of your career yeah yeah, um, yeah. what was last season like for you like as a team because I'm not a Leeds fan but I thought Leeds were so fucking unlucky like I I thought like it was almost like everyone was just like oh yeah Le-, especially because of the season before I think because yeah. of how well everyone did yeah and then going into the season no one was even thinking oh, mate, 
Leeds are going to have a good year. I know a lot of people were saying, oh, Leeds were even like top half again. Yeah. Um, and then as the season kind of crept along, so I was like, oh, shit, Leeds might be in a bit of trouble, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then you had a lot going on. Obviously, injuries affected the team. Yeah. Um, Marcelo leaving. Mm-hmm. What, what was that like? Was, was that a shock? Or was it kind of like you saw it coming? Um, again, I guess I get a little bit of both. So, like, obviously the the position we had in the table and the results at the time weren't really going our way. And I think it's the same in in any industry, really. You know, if you if if the results aren't there and whatever job you're in, the the performance isn't what it needs to be, then people, you know, start thinking about change and how to, you know, bring it back back up again. So, um, obviously it was it was sad for everybody because we'd had, you know, a, a, like a pretty special... Um, bond. Bond and done some pretty pretty special things. Well, he, he's been probably his most successful manager for the last, what, 10, 20, not, maybe not 20 years, but at least 10, 10, 15 years. Yeah, it was... It was one of the one of the big reasons that the team are in the, the mm. Premier League now, so I'd definitely say I'd definitely say you're right there. So I I I I just thought that he'd probably stay until the end of the season. Was there was it kind of a, a mutual thing? Obviously, I know that you you weren't part of the decision of what happened, but like coming from the dressing room, was it was it the feeling mutual from the players that were thought, oh well, we'll probably have him until the end of the year, or was it just? I'm not sure. We don't. To be fair, we don't really like talk. Yeah. Talk about that sort of stuff. It's just like th- this is the situation. Let's let's. This is what's happened. Yeah. Let's focus on. At that time, focus on training hard, working hard, with whoever's in charge, and you know, keep 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 the club keep the club where it should be. Did did you guys? Um when the new manager came in, what, what was that like? Obviously, I can imagine it's a breath of fresh air. Yeah, exciting. Guy. And, and a lot of a lot of credible people, you know, spoke highly of your new manager. He's yeah. got a good track record. So I'd say, is it safe to say different style of play as well to what you guys were used to? Yeah. Was that yeah. was that hard to adjust to at the period of the season that you guys were in? Um, not so much, no, because we did it in bits. You know, it wasn't like a complete yeah. swap of... So it was it was done it was done really like a like a smooth transition into which is a transition that's obviously still going on now in um in pre season for them. So um it was like a little bit of time and take that on and me, but meanwhile still trying to yeah. improve and do what's needed to keep to keep the position we had. Did you get a chance to speak to Marcelo before he left or as he left rather? Um, not not on a one to one basis sort of thing. And just on a group basis. Yeah. 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 Was the same for the new gaffer that came in. Did he did he speak to everyone one to one or was it just? I mean, okay, obviously he would have spoken to everyone one to one eventually, but when he yeah. first came in, was it just? Obviously, t- t- the first sort of conversations was a group, and then over time, he obviously get got chance to to um, get around everybody and you know get to know people. What was the pressure like going into those last few games? Um, well, at the time, obviously, I wasn't in the in the starting eleven. I was on the on the bench, so you know there's a possibility I could have um, could have come on and been involved in um, in a pretty pretty important games. Um, but yeah, of course, for everybody who was around the relegation zone, or just most teams at that time of year, who've got something to play for, the, obviously the pressure levels rise and the games much more important so the last couple were um, a bit nervy but I thought I thought everybody who you know played a part dealt with it, dealt well, with it well. I, I can imagine even though it's not for the greatest scenario the fact that it's high pressure that's kind of what you guys live for isn't it like yeah. even though you don't want to be in high pressure for fighting for to stay to, to, to not get relegated I can imagine yeah but on the flip player, side yeah exactly yeah well you talk, can, me th- talk me through the Brentford day like from when you woke up to after that, what was what was the feeling for yourself and then obviously for the team? I felt like I felt like between everybody there was f- 
like fairly relaxed and fairly fairly confident. We obviously knew that um, I think on the day we had to better Burnley's results, so if they won, there was nothing else really we could have done. Um, but we knew that I think Newcastle, they played on the last day. Um, well, I think good riddance for Burnley, mate. I think everyone's <laughs> fucking glad that Burnley left. <laughs> <laughs> um, everyone would much rather have Leeds in the Premier League. Leeds are a fucking much bigger club. Burnley just... To be fair, you got to give credit to Burnley because... I mean, they've had basically no funding since they've been in the Premier League. They've, they've had Sean Dyche, basically. Who's done a, who did a great job. With Unbelievable. What, did, did he get sacked or did he leave? I can't remember. I thought he got sacked. I think he got sacked, yeah. didn't he? Which probably to him is a blessing in disguise, but I think it was time for Burnley to leave the Premier League. I don't think anyone's too disappointed that they, got, <laughs> they ended up going down. Um, yeah, what was the dressing room like after the, after the game, bro? I can imagine you fucking went mental. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> A lot of um, a lot of relief, and um, yeah, I think everybody enjoyed that evening, <laughs> and certainly you know the rest of the the rest of the time off. It, it was um, I think it would have been much more difficult had we that day gone a little bit differently. Had you guys packed up and gone straight back to Leeds for a little after party, or were you just having an after party in London? Um, so we got on the bus. And went back to Leeds and oh. sort of did it there. I bet you were hammered by the end of that bus ride. It was a good bus ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine, bro. Um, what was it like to get to train along players like Rafinha, Calvin? You know, these guys are just secured big transfers yeah. to, to huge clubs. Like, what was it like to get to train along them and what, what were they like personally? Both. Like honest, like genuinely hard-working people. Um, you know, never complain or just get just get on with it, work hard, keep their head down, and that's why they're obviously reaping the uh, rewards now. And at clubs who are playing at the highest, the highest level. I'm assuming being at the club for a while with Calvin, did did you take manage to take quite a lot? from him, from speaking to him about, well, just learning about the game, but then even learning about stuff off the pitch? Yeah, I'd say I've, I've always, like, looked up to him in a way, you know, he he was, he made the, the sort of the pathway from academy to first team before I did, and that's something that I always wanted to do. So he's always been kind of like, he's obviously a few years ahead, and yeah, he's, um, he's a good guy. I, I I could be mistaken, but I remember when we spoke last time. You said that was it was it Stuart Dallas that took you under his wing a lot. Um, uh, Barry Douglas. Oh, Barry Douglas. Yeah, my yeah. bad. I apologise. Yeah. Um, have you? I'm assuming you guys have, have kept in touch. Yeah, I speak to Barry. Yeah. I speak to Barry now and again. He's um. He's good. Good lad. Yeah. I remember you. He was. I think it was during the period where you were injured a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, and he was like kind of guiding you through there. Mhm. Mm what other figures have you been around over the last couple of years that have really like you've taken a lot from? Um, I'd say uh, Adam Forshaw he he's always there like you know is any issues are very very approachable and you know good to chat with easy to easy to get along with. Anyone else any coaches any coaches you've had in the past? Ooh, coaches. Um, so there's uh, Mark Jackson, who's like worked his way up through the um, like Leeds coaching groups. So from I think under 16s, and now he's this year he's now working with the with the first team. Oh, so the new so coach. Have you kind of gone up together at the same time, almost. Yeah, similar yeah. similar sort of times, and he's. Um, the new manager's come in and sees sees Jacko as like a a key key part of the of the group and he's he's a he's a top top coach, yeah. Do you ever go to like we were saying before, you, you like watching loads of other sports, do you have any external forms of motivation? So like, is is there anything that you watch that you think, Oh, do you know what gives you like a little bit of fire after you've been 
engaged in it? So I had a, I had a stage where I um, got into golf. Wasn't the great, greatest at first, but stuck at it. Got to like a decent level where I could get around the course and, you know, without, without being in the trees too much. Um, but then that, that sort of died away a bit. But I'm meaning to, you know, try get try get back into that because obviously with the days we have during the season, there's sometimes, you know, days where it's, you know, you're sort of finished and, and home for, for two, three. Um, just train in the morning, do your gym in, in the morning and stuff. Um, so there's plenty of time, plenty of time with the rest of your day to do something. And um, I just think it's a good, it's a good spot. I feel like footballers like that's like one of the main things that they 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 thought I, think, I mean that could be a proper like generalization but i feel like so many footballers there that's one of their I think, hobby sports yeah i think a big reason is because it's not like too it's not too strenuous yeah. anybody so you've obviously had a tough morning or a tough week training and then it's basically just a walk around and yeah. every every so often you stop and have a swing and it's not like um i don't know it's not like going and playing rugby like yeah, yeah, yeah running, sure. running around so obviously less risk of um, injury involved with golf. So, are they? Is the club like ever on to you about doing stuff outside of training? Like, would, would, would if if say if you wanted to do something which you thought might have been a bit strenuous, would Leeds kind of be like, oh, well, do you know what? Probably best not to do it. In terms um, of like because of how much money is involved with like sponsors as well. Yeah, like, I think you need to be. I think you need to be like clever with it. Yeah. So, um, as an example, like my mates play, my mates all play um, six aside on a like on a Thursday afternoon. A few a few of my, my good mates play that. So, I go watch. I'd love to play. Like I'm looking, thinking, <laughs> I just want to go and play that. Yeah. Like, that looks that looks fun. Um, but. Then I'm putting myself, you know, in a position where you could get injured. I, yeah, I could get injured. Likely I wouldn't, but it's possible. And if if I was to, you know, get injured doing something like that, then it doesn't. It just doesn't. Yeah, it's not really worth the risk, is it? And no, it's not so, worth the the stress you'd get from exactly. So an I, I can wait. I can wait until I'm retired. To I said the minute the minute I'm retired, I'm I'm in that I'm in that six aside team. So is it? Is it hard, like seeing, like, because obviously, I remember you were saying before when we first spoke as well that you kind of your best memories of playing football was like when you were younger, like just playing with your mates and stuff. Like knowing that that's like the roots of where yeah. you had all like the passion for football and stuff. Is it hard then to not get involved when you see your mates doing it? A little bit, yeah. It's yeah. a bit frustrating, but there's a, um, I guess there's a bigger picture than. You know, I guess. half an hour on a on a Thursday night, and like <laughs> I say, it's something that something that once I've retired, I'll be um, I'll be there. Going into this next season, then, have you set yourself any personal goals apart from obviously the obvious of playing? Um, yeah, I want to play, and like particularly with the position I want to play, I want to start adding like goals, assists getting into the box and being involved in that more of that sort of thing. Are you wanting to transition into more of a centre attacking midfielder? Yeah, just to play in the just to play in the middle um, and be involved in sort of everything at both ends. So getting forward and like I say, contributing to to goals and assists, hopefully. Well, Jamie, rack up a few. I'm sure you'll do brilliantly well wherever you end up playing next season. Um, I said it to you earlier, but I want to make sure I say it on camera because I truly mean it. I speak for everyone that knows you when I say this. You help out everyone where you can. You're a fucking really down to earth bloke. You've helped me out more than you could even think by doing these two podcasts with me. So from me to you, I want to say thank you. I'm sure like I said, I speak on behalf of a lot of your friends. You're a good bloke bro, so you're destined for greatness so thank you for coming on bro no, thank you very I much appreciate it man thank you thank, thank you for having me podcast and we're done